Um, as children of God, understanding what we possess and what we have in our in, in, in the inheritance that, that Jesus has brought. You know, earlier I just said it's just wonderful that Jesus died for our sins and all, but he blew open the door to so much more, so much more that he has given us. And it's just wonderful to be able to think about that, what he has given us. And so when, when we really understand that, we're able to have victory over the world, over Satan. We are able to have the confidence, even though things aren't going well in our lives, we still know that God is right there with us. And I think that's going to be the biggest thing. Christ in you, the hope of glory. When you have Jesus with you, if God be for us, listen to those words right there. If God be for us, who can be against us? See, and, and, and this is where we have to either live, you know, we, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Come on. You know, either we're, we're responding to those things around us, or we're really living in the kingdom of God under his promises, knowing what he has given us. And that's, that, that, my friends, is the difficult part of this walk. It's always being able to put aside the things that we see around us and then bring it back over into the kingdom of heaven. And that's, that's, that's a tough one. Because, you know, the devil's always wanting to remind you, the world is wanting to remind you that it has control over you. And we're saying, no, you don't. You don't have any authority. You have no right over me. Because I am a son of God who has been set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. It's true. It is so true. And this is where, you know, this is where our, our emotions, this is where our emotional, you know, our emotional beings have to really get in line with the Spirit of God. Because our emotions can go like this. Our emotions can go up and down all over the place. But when you give yourselves to the promises of God and you walk by the Spirit, it does this. It, it'll just do that. And, and many times it'll just do this. Your heart, will be, your heart will be so steadfast in the Lord that you will have an assurance that's unshakable. It's unshakable. And, and, you know, and, and sometimes you'll find yourself in a pickle, you know, and, and then you go back to the Lord and then you find yourself, you know, steadfast again. And I think that we need to, you know, we need to walk in that, in that assurance uh, that, of what God has given us. And that only comes as we meditate and we look at God's word and we understand what God's word is and stay right there. Of course, we're, we're going to be, you know, we're going to have that emotion going on. And, and that kind of thing. Um, so let's let's go over here. Uh, and in chapter two, Paul is talking. Paul is Paul is talking to the Corinthians. He has not met them, and then he is t telling them that he also has been struggling for the people in Laodicea. And uh, if anything, if anything, what we need to do is we need to encourage one another. There is so much, you know, we, we Americans like to live independent lives that we don't like other people to come in. And, but what we need to do is not, what we need to do is encourage one another and, and remind each other of the things that we have available through, through God. Amen. See, because it was Abraham, uh, Abraham was given the promise. Uh, you know, what, what do we have in God? We have him. He is our exceedingly great reward. When you have God, you have everything you need. Everything. Everything. It doesn't matter what the economy is doing. It doesn't matter what the governments are doing. We're living, the word living in the kingdom of God, we have everything that we need. We do. And that's one of the things, that's where we need to live. We need to live right in that area. Now he says, I want you to know what great conflict I've had for you in those, and uh, for you and those in Laodicea for as many as I have not seen my face in the flesh. He says, uh, for as many as have not seen my, uh, my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, knit together in love, and attaining all the riches and full, uh, and full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both the Father and of Christ, and, and in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Okay, just look at that. Don't read it so fast. I keep telling everybody every Sunday, slow down. Look at the words, because the words will tell you everything. Yes. I'll tell you what. One of the things that Jesus encouraged his disciples, he said, do not, do not be rich in material things, but be rich in God. Amen. Okay? 
Now Abraham, God said, God told Abraham, he says, I'm going to bless you above all measures. He says, I'm going to bless you because I'm going to be with you. See, there is a there are riches that we have right now that exceeds any material blessing, anything that the world can provide you. We have those available right now, right here today, present tense. We really do. Amen. We really do. And if we can find that, we, we can find that. Now, the, you know, um, uh, uh, Abraham was able to walk in that assurance that God was with him. Once, once Abraham was able to see that in his life, and we need to see that in our lives. Once we see this in our lives, the world is not scary any longer. See, because God is with you. And he will, he, 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 he is, I am. I am that I am. And, and I will provide everything you need. Everything. Everything from the love and the assurance, the fellowship. You know, we're emotional beings. We need that kind of love in our, in our lives. We need people to look us in, our, our, in, in the eye and tell you, I love you. You matter to me. You are important to me. We are to love the Lord God. Our, you know, we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then love our neighbor as ourself, as yourself. We're, you know, a lot of times, a lot of times, our need comes from that real deep, basic area that you know we long for that and desire that love from other people, and it's because we're desiring it from God as well. And so, as we begin to realize how much God loves us, and and we find ourselves assured that God loves us, and there's no doubt that I am valuable and I am valuable to Him. And he has given everything to us and in, in, in an act of love towards us, then we don't doubt that position. And we begin to, we begin to, uh, you know, our, then we're in the position to be able to love others, folks. And that's what God wants us to do. He really wants us to be able to do that. The next thing we have is, uh, will I be taken care of? You know, these are our basic needs. Our ba you know, babies thrive on love. If, if you remove love from babies, boy, they can wither in a hurry. They will have psychological problems for a long, long time. Don't be fooled. Adults need the same thing too. We need that kind. And so, uh, so here he is talking about that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, attaining to the riches. Attaining to the riches, riches of the full assurance of understanding. Folks, I am a son of God, and I have everything that God has afforded to me in heaven. Not only, you know, not only do I have, um, you know, eternal life. Uh, 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 you know, Jesus said, "I have come to give you life, life more abundant." But upon, you know, and on top of that, you know, on top of that, I have all the other promises that come through the Holy Spirit. I have the, I have, I have the ability to use the power of the name of Jesus Christ. I can, I can call on him at any time and invoke his name because there is no other name by which man shall be saved on earth, but there is no higher power than the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, how do we use that? How, how do we use that? When you're facing a situation, what we need to do is we need to cry out to God and say help and then wait. Because... You know, sometimes, sometimes what we do is we want to fix it ourselves. We want to fix certain things ourselves. But the battle is not ours. It becomes the Lord's. Once you begin to call out on God, then God begins to get involved. God begins because he has promised us that. He said, I will be with you always, even to the ends of the earth. I will be right there with you. So what we need to do is, I'm finding now that a lot of times when we are feeling afraid or anxious or any of those kinds of things... We need to exercise that patience and long suffering. We talked about that. Paul co covered that already. When you step back and allow God to go forward and you wait, you see what happens. All of a sudden, you start moving into, into that realm where God, where, where God is at. Now that's outside of the physical realm, folks. We have to understand that it's outside of the physical realm. You know, because the physical realm gives us all of the, you know, the, you know, what you see, what you smell, taste, hear, and touch. It's your five senses. What we need to do is not walk by sight, but walk by faith in God. That's where we trust God, and that's where the riches are at. We need to be rich in God. Now that means I will have peace and assurance, and God will always 
provide and be there for you. Always. Always, always, always. That one, those, th those kinds of things are hard to grasp. And sometimes we don't think that they're very important. Esau, Jacob and Esau, remember they were brothers in the Old Testament. Esau had the birthright. We have the birthright today because we're born again. And the promises are all ours. God promised to take care of my children and my children's children. Yes. And, that, you know, and there, there were a lot of times that I would say, well, look at my, ki my children. You know, they were, my kids would move away to different parts of the country. And my wife would go, well, what's happening with my grandkids? Oh, you know, my grandkids. And I said, I said, oh, oh. You know, remember Pharaoh raised Moses. How did Moses turn out? Uh, Moses, I mean, Moses Matthew didn't turn out too bad at all. <laughs> and, and that we have to always go back, always go back to the promises of God and remember what he has done. Now look at the life of Joseph. I want you to look, we, we need to look at the life of Joseph in the Old Testament. You know, he had the promise of God. God revealed to him the kingdom of heaven and he was seeing visions. If you have aspirations, if you have if you know God is very powerful in you, you will not be afraid to speak the promises of God wherever you go. Amen. You will know God so intimately that when people speak about God in, in crazy ways, you will get offended. Because that's by God that you're talking about. And he doesn't, he doesn't, there's no, there's no, you know, it doesn't, there's no resemblance of what you're saying about him right now. And I'm offended that you're, you're talking about my God that way. Joseph had the promise of God in, on his life, and yet his life seemed to have taken wrong turns every time he turned around. How many of you have ever felt like that's happening in your life sometimes? You know, you feel like, well, wait, wait a minute, Lord, I don't know if I can do this, or oh, what just happened, you know? And so with Joseph, not only was he hated by his brothers, they sold the little twerp, <laughs> to slaves <laughs> they sold him I mean they, they put him in a pit you know they, 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 they kind of you know they, they, they arrested him put him in a pit and then when the slave traders came by they took him and sold him and off he went boy I, can, I can't imagine what he was feeling at that point when he was locked up in a cage as he was headed off to Egypt can you imagine what he must have been feeling? Wow. Talk about, you know, uh, talk about emotional abuse. <laughs> and, and, you know, so then he gets down there. He is put on a slave block and Potiphar, Potiphar, uh, uh, Potiphar buys him. You know, checks his teeth, checks his arms, you know, checks he's a young, handsome, strong man. Exactly what I, what I, what I need and I want. What Potiphar didn't realize is that the promise of God was resting on Joseph. Joseph knew the riches of God. Now watch how it fleshes out. Watch how it fleshes out. So now Joseph is now in the house of Potiphar, and Potiphar is a businessman, kind of second to Pharaoh. You know, he's close to Pharaoh, the king, and he's got a huge property with lots of servants and lots a lot to do. And, and Potiphar looks at Joseph and realizes this kid has something going for him. I don't know what it is. And it was the blessing, the presence of God. And God had given him wisdom. Folks, there is a divine, there, there is a divine spiritual wisdom that is set apart from worldly wisdom. And, and, and we talked about that about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And that God, God gives us a spiritual wisdom, and it's nothing like earthly wisdom. Joseph possessed that wisdom. He knew how to, he knew how to administrate, you know, he knew what to do. So he goes ahead and he starts and he starts managing all of Potiphar's business. Potiphar trusted him so much, he gave him all of his accounts and he says, you take care of all the business. I know I will not have to worry. The only thing I'm withholding back from you is my own wife. So even though he was a slave under those circumstances, he still had the riches of God present with him. Folks, whatever circumstances that you're facing right now, you still have that, that riches, those riches of God. Those are, uh, they're, they're, they're spiritual riches. They are not material. They are, they're, they're not, they're, 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 they're spiritual. And that's one of the things that we have to count on. So then, you know, 
Potiphar's leaving the house all the time and his wife is lonely and she's, she starts looking at him and starts saying, hey, you know, why don't we just go ahead and have a little dinner and go do something here? And, you know, he won't know anything about it. And, and Joseph, he is dedicated to his God. He is dedicated to his God because he knows what God means to him. And he knows that to break covenant with God would, would mean to break break his oath and do something sinful. And he says, no, I am not doing that. I am keeping my promise to God. And he avoids her everywhere he can until she corners him one day and says, no, no, I need you right now, today, right here, right now. And, and he flees, he grabs his coat and he's gone. When Potiphar gets back, she falsely accuses him of rape. He, he gets mad. He gets mad and throws him in prison. Falsely accused, throws, throws him in prison. Now, his circumstance changed, but his God did not. His riches went with him. His, the presence of God went with him. Any, any situation that you may be facing will turn out to the best no matter what it is, and no matter what kind of uh, character, you know, can you imagine that, you know, the the, 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 the the Egypt Daily Star would have been, what would they would have been saying about him? You know, uh, you know, Potter's first servant, you know, accused of rape, now in, in prison. He was administrating, he was, he was administrator of all, he was administrating all of the Potter's, uh, you know, now it's, 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 uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, extortion and, 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 and corruption in, in this Christian man's life. No, I don't care what the world is saying. Not the world's knowledge, not the world's reputation, God's reputation. Come on. God's knowledge. See how, see how that works? And, and sometimes you get, you know, I'm finding myself in some very challenging areas now, and it's just like, wow, what do I do with this kind of stuff? I told you about the toaster, right, didn't I? <laughs> Some of you guys didn't hear that, but I was I was quoted by the uh, uh, the Green Valley Star that I said you can marry a toaster if you want, <laughs> and and so so you know and, and, and they they totally took took me out of context with what they did is because I was I was defining I was defending marriage, folks. I was defending marriage at the at the at the Capitol, and what I said is marriage is sacred. I said, marriage is sacred. I said, when you begin to define marriage, when you begin to redefine marriage, I said, then you lose the meaning of marriage, the way that God designed it to be between one man and one woman forever. Then you begin to lose the meaning of it. I said, then you can marry same sex. You can marry a, a goat. You can marry your dog. And you can even marry... A toaster. <laughs> <laughs> if you want. I didn't even quote the rest of that. And so here it is. And, and my, my idea was, okay, I know that they wanted to shame me over here and do that kind of stuff. And I always think about ne negative press is always good press. <laughs> because I got the attention from several different people that came to me later and said, did you really say that? These are influential uh, uh, you know, these are politically influential people that came to me. I didn't have to go to them. They came to me. <laughs> the riches and the treasures of God doesn't matter. See, that's that's the world's the world's wisdom and spiritual wisdom. That's the power of God in our lives, folks. But that's something that you walk in. That's something that you know in your heart that is with you, it's a spiritual element that follows you and it's not physical. It manifests itself in the physical, but it, it's not physical. You have to know it. You have to grab hold of it by faith and you have to walk in it by faith. You really do. So now Joseph has been accused and he's sitting in prison and the same gifting is in him, the same promises are with him and so the, the warden looks at him and says, there's something special about that young man and starts giving him all of the charge of the of the of the of the prison and, and uh, of the of the of the dungeon and prison and everything and all the prisoners so then so then the baker 
and, and the wine, the, the cup holder ended up in prison. The, evidently, the king was having a bad day, arrested the, the baker and the, and the uh, cup holder and threw them in prison. And they had dreams. And Joseph knew how to interpret dreams. And interpret, interpreting dreams, I know that God talks to us sometimes in dreams. And you will know it when, when God is really talking to you through dreams. You will know it. There's no doubt about it. This is God speaking to you. That's also part of the riches and treasures in the knowledge and understanding of God. It is a supernatural understanding and wisdom. Folks, you have that available. Here's a God. Here's a God who knows the future. He, he knows the past. He can reveal things to you that you've never seen or heard of before. I'm telling you, I know because I've seen some of that. It is amazing. So he, so these two guys, you know, they explain their dreams to uh, to to Joseph, and Joseph tells them the dreams. I'm not going to go through the whole dream thing because that's not my point. My point here is that God is with him. Okay, He is really with him. And then he tells the, you know, so then the, the king calls back to the the, uh, the, the baker and the uh, uh, cupbearer, and he says, "Remember me when you're in the presence of the king." One of them lost his life. The baker, they, they, they beheaded him. And then the other one was restored. But forgot about Joseph. Now, not only was he put in prison, falsely accused, now he's forgotten in prison. I mean, I would be, I would be, I would be having the biggest pity party that I could have. Oh no, woe is me. You know, look at, look at. People who understand the riches and the treasures of God do not throw pity parties. <laughs> they, they do not play the victim card. Folks, listen to that. I hear whining all the time now. <laughs> yeah. I am. I'm hearing it all the time. It's just like, oh, you know, we're victims. Nobody's treating us right. Blah, blah, all this other stuff. And I'm going, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> No, don't play the victim card. Remember who you are in Christ. There is nothing that can come against you. There is no circumstances that can be thrown at you, even death. Because of death, you graduate. There is. I remember being, I remember being, uh, being threatened by a staff sergeant that didn't like God at all. And he said, Lupe, he says, if I had any power over you, and he didn't, because I was civilian and he had stripes on his shoulders, Two jurisdictions, buddy. You, know, you can't do anything. You can't do a thing to me. I'd put you out in the mountain by yourself for you know, for months. You know that would be my punishment. I'd say that'd be great because I'd be meditating on God. You know, just <laughs> praising God out there. You know. Oh, and then he'd say, you know, then he then he threatened me. You know, if I if I would have a knife and I would just really do it to you, and I'd say, well, then I would then I would graduate, and you would send me to my father. He could. <laughs> He, he didn't have an argument. He just didn't have an argument. Folks, that's how you overcome the world. Is knowing the riches and the power of God. Then the king had a vision. And then the cupbearer said, Oh no, I forgot about this guy named Joe in prison. Brought him out. And then he was made second in command in Egypt. He went from being hated by his brothers in prison up to the second in command in Egypt. Not by the, not by the world's wisdom and power, but by the power of the, of the wisdom and the riches of God. Amen. See, because he understood his position. God is going before me. I don't have to figure it out. How about that, guys? Most of you are trying to plan out your... God figures it out for you. And and it, and sometimes it's hard because you know you think oh no I just goofed up and I just made the worst mistake in my life and the devil's right there yeah you did you made the worst mistake in your life they're gonna hate you they're not even going to do this for you anymore you know and I'm thinking <laughs> and then I think it doesn't matter it doesn't matter who am I pleasing man man or God God is going before me. You know, and I and I, you know, and I've been able to take a moment at a time. Just moment. My my world has changed. My world has been turned upside down on its head here this past couple of two months. Yes. And I all I've had to do is take it a moment at a time, right. moment at a time, 
moment at a time, knowing that God is going before. And he also, the, and, and if when you look at what David said, he says, not only, is God go be, not only does God go before me, he is my rear guard. Amen. He also protects my, my, my sides, and yes. he is above me and under me. God is compasses me. Amen. But it may not look like it, but Joseph knew he did. And he did not, and he, you know, while Joseph was in prison, he was, he was talking to the prisoners and he says, are you doing all right? You, you look like you're depressed today. What's going on? See, he wasn't thinking about himself. Oh, woe is me. You know, I'm depressed. No, he was, he was on top on his game and he was sharing, he, he was able to bring that to those, to those two guys. See, the only way that you can be the only way that you can really minister to those around you is to understand the riches and the and and, and the treasures and the understanding that God has given to us. God used Joseph to rescue the world at that time because of the famine that hit. And not only rescued the world, but it was able to rescue the 72 people that God called his own. And then multiplied them in Egypt and they became a mighty nation. And through that lineage came Jesus Christ. Amen. It was amazing, you know, and this is God. I like I like being on this side of the I like being on this side of the aisle. <laughs> I do. I like being on this side. It is wonderful to be on this side. And he and he says, and, and he says that their hearts may be encouraged, be knit together in love attaining all the riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ. So, you know, when you read those words, you know, kind of pause there to the knowledge of the mystery of God. That's not a mystery any longer. The mystery is open now. See, because it's not just God with us, but Christ in you. Amen. Now, Amen. if Christ is in me, then, you know, uh, and it's, he says, I've been crucified to the world and the world has been crucified to me. It's no longer I that lives, but what? Christ lives in me. And if he's living in me, he's living through me. It's like, you know, it's like I'm the glove and he just filled me up and now I'm doing his bidding. I'm doing his bidding now. See, that's, an, that's, a, that's the understanding that I have. Christ is living in me now. It's not my strength. It's not my power. It's not my might. It's His might. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Now I can just kind of like, okay, Lord. Okay, you see where we're at? My wife says, how come you're always saying, we're going here, we're going there? When it's only you. Do you have somebody with you that I'm not supposed to, I'm supposed to know about? <laughs> I'm thinking, well, it's Jesus and me. You know, it's just it's Jesus and me. Yeah, I'm, this is who it is. I'm not alone. <laughs> so we need, we need to look at that. And he says, in whom are hidden all the treasures. All the treasures. All the treasures. The problem with the church today is that we don't know what the treasures are. We're, we're, and I mentioned, I mentioned Jacob and Esau. It was Esau that had the it was Esau that had the firstborn, and he had blessing of God, but he did not understand the power and the treasures of his birthright. He did not understand it. See, Christians today don't understand their position. We need to understand who we are and what has been afforded to us. And when he got famished, he got, you know, again, God will provide all of your needs. He was out there hunting. He failed at hunting. He, would, he failed at providing for himself. He failed, and he was coming in, you know, feeling kind of down at, at failing, but he had his eyes on those, on the worldly things rather than on the birthright that said, because you have it, I will provide everything you need. But he forgot about it. Where are you today? Are you remembering your birthright? Or have you forgotten it? And now are you encouraged to remember your birthright? See? And he sold he sold his birthright to his brother. His brother knew. He, his brother knew exactly what that birthright it was. It's kind of like, ooh, if I can just get my hands on it. 
I know exactly what I can do with it because I know what it means. It means that God will be with me and everything that I do will prosper because God is with me. So he went ahead and he positioned himself way out there and he knew that Esau was coming back and he said, uh, hey brother, he says, look what I just made. I made you some red, red bean soup. He says, give me some of that. I can just see him doing that. Esau. You know, the big old macho man, you know, give me some of that, little brother. Get out of my... No, 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 no not so fast. <laughs> he says, sell me your birthright and I'll give it to you. And he said this. He said, I am banished and dying. What good is my birthright to me right now? Here it is. You can have it. Wow. Don't ever sell your birthright. Don't ever give up your birthright. In fact, always remember. Always come back. Always pull your birthright. Understand your birthright. Understand it. Understand it. Get in there. Look at it. Stop. Meditate. Think about what God has given us. All of the songs that we sung this morning were pointing to the to what we sung today. Everything. It was amazing. Ben and I never communicated about what I was my, my topic was. It was just like, wow. And even, even this music, even the music that Rhonda brought this morning, was it was just like, my goodness, this is so good, God. Yes, 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 I'm so glad you're with me. <laughs> and then he tells us, relax, celebrate, rejoice in the things that I've done for you. I want you to be, I want you to have a fulfilled life. Enjoy it. You know, may you prosper, you know, as, as your soul prospers. You know, in, in everything, body, soul, spirit, just enjoy life. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. You can get depressed if you want to teach me what's going on in Canada. <laughs> uh, yeah, but God's in charge. He's the one that turns the hearts of the kings and presidents. And he's the one that moves nations. Did you see what's going on at Walmart? All the, wa all the shelves are empty. Uh, yes, my God shall supply all of my According to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. See, that's the treasures and riches that we need to walk in. And God will use you to bring assurance. God will use you to bring knowledge. God will use you to share these kinds of things with others so that it makes sense. Amen. Yes, we are to contend for the faith. When I see somebody misrepresent God, I am there to correct them. Their understanding. Or maybe not their understanding. Maybe it's those that are hearing what they just heard about God. I'm talking to him, but I know it's these here that are, that are getting the understanding. I've had to do that several times already, you know, while I've been up there at the Capitol. And so it's wonderful. I love you guys. I love doing this. I, this is, I mean, I tell you what. You know, we're, we're, we just get elevated. You know, we lose sight of the world for about an hour. And it's just, oh God, it's so good. It's just so good to be in the presence of the Lord, isn't it? And, uh, and many, many times I need this, I need this sermon as much as you all need it. I mean, <laughs> I thought this, I, you know, Twinkie says, do you have the sermon ready? And I said, oh yeah. I said, I need this one. <laughs> I do. I need this one. And we all do. I pray that you'll all be able to stay for uh, uh, for potluck. If you can't, that's okay. But it's always available for us. You know, God says that we should break bread together. There's something about eating and communing together as brothers and sisters sitting across the table from one another. So if you if you can do that, that's great. If you can't, I understand that. You know, not all of you plan on doing some of that, but if you can, that would be great. I've got allergies, and I just <clears throat> just had to pause there for a minute. Um, also, I want to uh, if you're if you're interested in in uh, in um, uh, baptism, uh, we're going to have baptism on Easter or Resurrection Sunday. Okay, we're going to have baptism, and we'll we'll do it. Just roll out our, our our horse tank, our stock tank, and we put it outside, or we bring it on inside. If it's snowing, we'll bring it inside. <laughs> But just remember, the tomb of Jesus was not he uh, heated either. 
So we have baptism coming up. Uh, we also have we also have um, a Wednesday evening service. I do the teaching on Wednesday evening service, and I'm streaming live from Tempe, Arizona, here, and then I'm zooming at the same time so I can see you guys. Now we're st I'm still working the bugs out of that one just a little bit. It's kind of a little bit of a disconnect because you're here and we're up there, but it still works. It's working. It's it's working. So I get to see you all, and it's been wonderful to do that. Um, any others? That's it. Any other announcements that we have to? Uh, ladies, we're not doing anything tomorrow. Yeah, as far as I know, we are. Okay, ladies. Uh, the the ladies crafting group all comes together, and and it's just a ladies fellowship time around crafts. Even if you don't have crafts, come on over anyway and just enjoy the fellowship. Uh, I know the ladies are talking about a lot of different things, and that starts at ten. Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock uh, on Monday. And so that's that's great. And uh, uh, let's see, is there anything else that we need? We're missing. Sober project. Uh, sober, yeah, sober pro sober project. Sober project Tuesday. Tuesday, seven p.m. here at Grace Chapel. Yeah. Okay. And that's for any kind of addiction. And addiction, twelve steps, fellowship based. Yep. 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 Amen. Amen. Yes. All right. Well, let us pray and we'll be dismissed. If any of you have any independent, any prayers that you would like for us to pray for, just come and see us. Uh, we can take some time and pray down here while everybody else is getting set up. Um, uh, we'll we'll, we'll uh, include the blessing of the meal with prayer. Um, the, the chairs are set up the way they are with the tables. All you have to do is turn the front row uh, tables, uh, chairs around. And we have the setup for our coffee works out really well then. Father, we come before you today and we thank you, Lord. Father, for reminding us of the true riches and treasures. Father, of the Spirit in you, O Lord God. Father, we thank you that we're able to come together and celebrate. Enjoy the time together, O Lord God. Father, just allow time to pause. Father, allow our, our cares and, and, and apprehensions just to cease, Lord Father, for just a little bit. Father, and just enjoy our, our, our fellowship time together. God, we pray for those that are, uh, are, are, are sick. Father, we pray for Patty as she is uh, ministering to her sister and, and uh, her sister in California, Lord Father. We lift her up to you, Lord. Father, we also lift Wanda's, uh, uh, Wanda's sister. And there's others that I know that uh, we pray for in our need of you, Lord God. And Father, we, we bless you and praise you for that. In, encourage and strengthen them, we pray, O Lord. And we thank you, for, Father, for that. Also, we ask your blessing upon our meal today. Father, our time of fellowship, uh, may, may we just uh, allow our hearts, Father, to enjoy and rejoice in the moment, O oh Lord. I pray for my brother David, Dave, as he is uh, going back to Can uh, Canada, going back to Alaska, a little further than that. Going back to Alaska, O oh Lord, Father. I uh, pray that all of his packing, everything that he needs to get done, Lord, Father, that you would just, uh, yeah, be with him. And allow your riches and treasures just to come forth for him. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. And thank you, Lord, Father, for each person that is here. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you all. Go on with the power and the understanding of the riches and treasures of Christ or in Christ Jesus.